All right, guys, good evening. Um, I'm going to try to do this as quickly as possible. Um, I know some of you guys do not like it on the, the present. You'd rather have it on the edge of creations, but um, unfortunately, I just want to get it done for you guys as fast as possible. So that's why we're going to do it this way. So I apologize for that. All right, today we are going to be talking about Republicans in the progressive era. So our learning target for today, I can describe ways that Teddy Roosevelt squared up society with big business. Again, I can describe ways that Teddy Roosevelt squared up society with big business. So when we talk about squaring up, what exactly does that mean? Well, when we think about squaring up, we want to think about the idea of getting even. And that's exactly what Teddy Roosevelt is going to do. So Roosevelt becomes the president early 1900s, 1901. And he actually becomes president by very, very bad luck. And we're going to, I'll tell you guys that story tomorrow. Um, it's actually um, somewhat amusing. But Roosevelt does not mess around as the president. He goes right after big business. And his concept that he created was something known as the square deal. And what the square deal is, is that he vows to make ordinary citizens equal to big business or as he says, squares them up. Because remember, when we talk about this, big business is super, super high up on the food chain and the common man, the factory workers, the farmers, they're super, super low. So he wants to even things out to make sure that the common man has just as many, if not more rights than big business. So how does he fight against big business? Well, these are the two biggest things that he does. The first thing that he does is he creates something known as federal arbitration. And federal arbitration is basically when a, um, a federal arbitrator basically acts as a judge and hears two sides of the story. So federal arbitration comes in big time when we look at um, strikes going on and we look at labor unions and we look at big business. And so instead of big business just saying, no, screw you, like government can't do anything about it, now a federal arbitrator will come in, hear both sides, and try to rule equally. Well, this comes up huge for labor unions. This is one of the biggest things that makes labor unions successful because now they have some backbone behind them. The other thing is the idea of trust busting. And basically, trust busting is just breaking up monopolies. And Teddy Roosevelt was super, super famous for breaking up, especially the railroad monopolies, but a bunch of other monopolies. And because he's breaking up and taking down monopolies, that is super, super good for the common man. Because as monopolies go down, competition goes up. And as competition goes up, then what happens is, is prices go down. So... Other Roosevelt accomplishments that he has, the first thing is protecting the citizens and protecting the environment. Through something known as a muckraker, what happens is, is Roosevelt kind of realizes how nasty all of the food is. And the greatest muckraker during this time period was a guy by the name of Upton Sinclair. And Upton Sinclair was the guy who wrote that excerpt that you guys read a couple days ago from The Jungle. He was the author of The Jungle. And so Upton Sinclair goes... Um, goes undercover, goes into the meat packing industry. All that stuff that you read about as far as the meat goes and what's going on with the meat is was all 100% true. He writes the book. Roosevelt reads the book, sends for Sinclair, sits down with Sinclair, decides all this stuff is so gross that he creates the, the FDA, the, Fu the Food and Drug Administration, and also something known as the Meat Inspection Act to, again, clean up big business to make sure it's not super, super terrible. Also, Roosevelt was a huge, huge believer in the environment. He was a big time hunter. Um, so things like natural resources, he was the first one who created a uh, national park. So like Yellowstone, Yosemite, you have Teddy Roosevelt to thank for that. And then also just preservation of nature and resources and everything like that. So there are some areas throughout the country where like you can't build homes or businesses because it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a preservation. That's all because of him. Now, unfortunately, what happens is, during this time period, there were no maximum amount of years that you could serve as a president. So even though Roosevelt could have ran again 
and won no problem in 1908. So he takes over in 1901, wins the 1904 election, could have ran again in 1908 and would have easily won. But he decides that he's going to kind of step aside. And he basically is able to handpick his successor. He is that good. So the guy that he picks, a guy by the name of William Howard Taft, essentially rides his coattails. And if you want to know what coattails is, we can talk about that more tomorrow. Um, the problem is, is that Taft comes in and Teddy basically handpicks Taft because he thinks that Taft is just going to follow his lead and do everything that Teddy had carried out. But the problem is, is that he does not. Taft gives in to big business. He's easily persuaded. And so he's weak on conservation. So like environment um, laws that, T that Teddy put into place, gone. We're going to talk about his role with tariffs and how he screwed tariffs, uh, how he screwed tariffs up and basically screwed over the, the common man. And so what ends up happening is Taft goes through his four years, the miserable four years, and we'll talk about what happens with the 1912 election. So after Taft's 1908 run, Taft decides again to run in 1912, and we're going to talk about that election tomorrow and how that will lead the way to our last progressive president, Woodrow Wilson. So, whoops. That's all I got for you guys. That is it. Short and sweet. Hope you guys enjoy your night. We will break down and talk about all this stuff tomorrow. Have a great day, guys.